Hello and welcome to the C++ and Science YouTube channel, where I will teach you various topics around C++. I'm your host, Andreas Fertig, a trainer and consultant for C++. Today's topic is about C++20's source location. C++20's source location helps us solving one case where we usually used a macro and in general we want to get rid of macro uses and they are not type safe and then they have various issues. So what I have here is a let's call it then legacy piece of code. I mainly have a function log error here which takes a string view message and then it takes a constant star file name and a line number. I use that to construct the log message here, which states first the file name and then the line number, and after that the text message. So this is my log function here, and I can obviously call it, and then I have to pass the two parameters to it, which we often use underscore underscore file underscore underscore and the line version, which I'm not repeating all the underscores for to gather the information to get the point where this function was called. Since usually, well, at least I do not want to border my users with that and then sprinkle file and line all over the code base, we provide a macro for that one error here, which takes the message as a parameter, calls log error and injects here file and line. So the call then looks slightly different. It's cleaner for users, but we are using a macro now. So it's not good or not as good as it should be in C++. C++ 20 source location solves that situation and helps us to remove this macro. So if we use the same code, this time here again in Compiler Explorer, then we can see I got rid of the macro, I still have the log error function, it still takes a string view as the first parameter, but as the second, it now takes a std source location. We need a source location header for that. And I use a default parameter here, source location, and it comes with a static member function current. This queries the source location of the caller. And that's a cool thing. So inside log error, I can use log here and access the file name via file name and the line via line. And I construct the essentially same message as before, as you can see here in the output. I still can call log error with a specific source location. I use current here again because it's a default parameter, so I can provide my own one, but I don't have to. And if I call log error now without providing a source location or a default parameter, then we can see it still works as expected. The question now, aside from showing you this, is obviously how does it work? How does current here retrieve the current source location? And this is where I go over to C++ and sites. I once implemented source location myself in the very beginning, but um, I never made it to pitch it to one of the standard libraries successfully. If you look at CPP reference, we can see that officially current does not take any parameter. If we do the transformation here in C++ and sites, then we can see the implementation is different. Current here takes a built-in source location as its default parameter. And it does so in both cases. This build-in here is driven by the compiler and it gathers the file name, the function name, the line and the column number from the place where it's called. The source location current itself plays no magic. The only thing it does is it hides another default parameter from us, which is a built-in provided by the compiler. And this is how we query that. You can implement source location yourself and thanks to that build-in, you can trim it to work across compilers. So this is one instance um, which I know of where the standard library documents there is no parameter, but in fact there is one. That's it for std source location. I hope this helps you clean up your code a little and get rid of even more macros coming in a more 
type safe and robust C++ world. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.